What's up, Buffalo Bill fans? I had promised I would do a video, but it's been a couple of weeks. There really hasn't been that much news going on, but I just wanted to address a few things. I mean, I know the Allen Branch signing, the Kevin Call, you know, basically pay for play contract, meaning, you know, dude, hold a clipboard, make your million and a half, whatever, don't play contract. That contract, the one that all Bills fans thought, oh my god, he's our newly anointed starter, you know, still stuck in the vacuo of, you know, Gailey and Jerron and all the, you know, lovely yesteryear coaches we've had. Um, Bills fans, I wanted to address Bills fans and just the whole culture of being a Bills fan. And when I do these videos, I just, I, I don't script anything. I kind of have a general idea of what I want to talk about, but I just mainly shoot from the hip. Bills fans are scared. They're scared. Bills fans as a whole are scared. And they're obsessed with being cute. And the Bills organization in the draft over the last decade has killed itself with being cute. Whether it's drafting Willis McGahey, who wasn't going to play for a year, whether it's trading a first round pick to New England for Drew Bledsoe only to then a, a year and a half later trade back up into the first round for another first round pick for JP Lossman passing on Nada Aaron Maben the list goes on Bills fans Dante Whitner Bills fans are just in love with this idea of being cute, trading back, trading back, trading back to trade back in. Why? I, I, I don't understand the idea of wanting to be cute and attain these mid-level picks when the biggest hole on the team and has been for seemingly forever. You think watching Ryan Fitzpatrick for the last four years and prior to that, Trent Edwards and J.P. Lossman would have just roused Bills fans into just wanting some semblance of hope. But now they're stuck in this idea of, well, trade back. and you still, they're, they're just so locked into putting Nassib under center because he played for Marone in college. The same way when Petten was hired that we were all going to, we were going to go out and sign Scott, Bart Scott, Eric Smith, um... Calvin Pace and what other ever Jets cast off on defense they were going to cut, the Bills were going to sign because they knew their system. And I'm going to talk more about that. This crap about, ooh, they they know the system or they're familiar, that, that is such horseshit. Football is football. X's are X's, O's are O's. You either, are, you either can play or you can't. There is no middle ground. A system does not make a player better. Players make systems better. Period. Over and out, end of story. These draft analysts who love giving themselves jobs and things to do and things to talk about to self-promote that overanalyze and overhype and just critique to the point of nausea, it... And we're at the point this time, it, the draft becomes just intolerable because now you look at a mock draft, they just don't mock the draft anymore. They're mocking picks. You're seeing drafts where it's like no less than 10, 15 trades in the first round. We all know there's going to be trades, but come on. It's hard enough to mock the picks, let alone trades. Jesus. It, it's... It's stupid. It's 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 fun, but come on, just just leave it alone. There's there's really no point doing it when it gets to that level. That just sometimes it is what it is. A spade is a spade. It, it just the pick is there, and and it, and for some reason people just outthink and overthink and and want to get cute. Oop, trade back because trade back. Why? What are we trading back for? What are the bills trading back for? I want to know. For the receiver they have to have? For that linebacker they have to have? Who, who? 
I, I, I'd love to know. I'd love to know what the Bills fans need to be cute for or what the Bills need to be cute for when the biggest, most albatross of a weakness is the most important one you can have, quarterback. And Bills fans will constantly reference, well, this, that. Teams that can get cute have good quarterbacks. The Patriots can jump up and down the board all they want because they have Tom Brady. The Falcons can move up and trade a bunch of first-round picks for Julio Jones because they have Matt Ryan. Same way with with, with what the Seattle Seahawks did. They can trade their first-round pick away. Well, if we got our quarterback, we can do whatever the hell we want. Bills can't. They don't have a quarterback. When you have a quarterback, it makes everything easier. Wide receivers might want to sign offer sheets. Might want to, you know, take flyers in Buffalo. Hey, you know, this quarterback can make me look good for years so I can go out in the market and make my make my money, i.e. Fred Jones, Fred Davis, sorry. Um, what's so complicated about that? Outside linebackers don't make you better. Bills have signed outside linebackers. They've signed outside linebackers, defensive ends, and I'm not talking shitty ones. Takeo Spikes, when he came to Buffalo, awesome pickup, big pickup. You know what? They didn't have a quarterback. They had Bledsoe on his way out the door. And J.P. Lossman after that. Mario Williams, big-time signing. Boop, didn't have a quarterback. Drafted good receivers. You know, Lee Evans. Brought in T.O. Boop, didn't have a quarterback. Running backs. Boop, no quarterback. What? What's... I'm naming I'm naming all the weaknesses here on the roster. Oh, we lost a guard. Oh, they signed a guard. Oh, Derek Dockery, big time signing. At the time, richest contract in Bills history. What did that get the Bills? Did that change the call? What did it get them? They cut him two years later. Come on. When you have JP Lossman under center, the uh, things aren't gonna go too well. And I know I'm, I'm going off on a bit on a tangent, but come on. It's it's quarterback all the way at eight. All the way. Bills are the most quarterback-needy team in the league, are staring right down the barrel of 14 years, halfway to two decades, almost halfway, well, well over halfway, to two decades without playoffs. I mean, come on. What more urgency is there? What what more you got a new coaching staff, a new organizational view, no more Ralph in the way. Bills fans get that. No more Ralph. Bills fans are complaining about not signing Mike Jenkins. Mike Jenkins? The guy Dallas threw out the door, did everything to replace. I mean, come on. Mike Jenkins is don't change the culture of your organization. Good quarterbacks change the cultures of organizations, not cornerbacks. Good players want to sign with teams that have good quarterbacks. NFL fans in general forget that these players have a shelf life of about this much in the NFL. This much. You have a three, three and a half year average NFL career last. Probably even a little less than that now, but last I checked, it was about three and a half seasons. That's nothing. So, you know, the volatile nature of the game, injuries, uh, just competition, turnover, draft, college free agency that, you know, you're staring down a barrel of 400 new faces coming into the league every year, aside from guys on your own team who want to take your position and other guys on other teams that could potentially take your position. So, again, it's a very volatile career choice and a very short shelf life. So these guys, you know, I don't think that they want to go to a team where their earning potential is going to be diminished because there's not a good quarterback. Teams with good quarterbacks get more attention. They get more publicity. They get more airtime. That's just the way it works. We we know that from being in the division with New England. And not too long ago, they had New England and the Colts in the AFC East. That was fun. So, I don't understand. Bills fans, please, just quarterback. 
think quarterback at eight. Don't regret it. Don't feel bad about it. Cordero Patterson, Tavon Austin, um, any other linebacker or guard, Chance Warmack. No. No. Thank you. No thank you. And moreover, these so-called draft experts. Now, if you're a Bills fan, I know I'm going over a little bit of my time here, but if you're a Bills fan and you listen to WGR or any other news outlets, I'm sure you all watch ESPN and McShay, and I talked about this in my prior videos, please don't listen to them. They have no clue what they're talking about. And I'm not saying I do. I'm some enlightened person that just doesn't have the, 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 the forum to, to hear my message. It's not that at all. Everybody has a difference of opinion, but some of these guys just go way over the top. And here's an example of a guy just going way out of his depth, talking about a guy who's a damn good football player. And if you're a Bills fan, a Bills listener, you'll know who Joe Biscaglia is. Here he is analyzing and talking about Jarvis Jones. To me, Jarvis Jones is not worth the eighth overall pick. And, it, and even if um, he, he were... You know, then you have to look at okay, what, how would he slot into the Bills defense? You have to you have to remember they just signed Manny Austin to a four year deal, and so he effectively slots in to the strong side linebacker job. Now with Jarvis Jones, what is he going to do on four three looks? Is he going to be a weak side linebacker? No. Is he going to be a middle linebacker? Probably not. And he would he would have to be a strong side linebacker in that look. But um, but when you go to the three four looks. Then you, then you have to look at what the Bills defense might look like. Mario Williams is going to be an outside linebacker. Um, you also look at uh, Mark Anderson, who's going to be in, uh, who will line up an outside linebacker at times, and also Manny Lawson, who will line up an outside linebacker at times. So in terms of urgency for for a guy like Jarvis Jones, who might not be worth it at eight, I know uh, Gil Brandt, who is pretty much the the, the father of the NFL draft <laughs> yeah. around forever. Right. He said he's dropping Jarvis Johnson Jones into his into the second round because wow. he doesn't believe he's a first round talent. It's crazy. So uh, I tend to trust Gil Brandt's opinion on that sort of stuff because he's very connected and because you know from what I've seen from Jarvis Jones, I don't think it really translates to being the eighth overall pick. So if, if they would, I still think they could take a, a pass rusher if a, if one of those top guys like a like a Dion Jordan or a, or an Ezekiel Ansa ends up falling to, to eighth overall, I, I wouldn't mind the Bills taking one of those guys because they have some versatility in their game. But when you look at Jarvis Jones, I just don't know that the juice is worth the squeeze there. Okay. First off, I'm not advocating the Bills draft Jarvis Jones. So let's make that right out front. I'm not saying, oh, they should draft just because I let you listen to that. So it, just from listening to that, Jarvis Jones cannot play football. He can't help you at weak side linebacker. He can't line up a strong side linebacker. He can't play middle linebacker. Can't do. Guy can't play. That's basically what he said. A guy who had 28 sacks and 45 and a half tackles for loss in the SEC cannot help the Bills' defense at linebacker. Can't do it, according to him. Are you? kidding me how could that how could he sit there and say that with a straight face here's a guy who is so bamboozled by the whole draft process he can't see the forest for the trees he watches a guy in shorts particularly not work out too well so what all of a sudden he's not a football player but Ezekiel Ansa and Deion Jordan are because they look good in shorts and ran ran nice times and looked all fancy in workouts. Meanwhile, go look at their production. All of their hype is based off potential and athletic ability. Maybe Jarvis Jones isn't the best athlete, but you know what? The results are, so, are sure as hell there. I'm not saying stats are everything, but those are pretty damn good. And I think any Bills fan would, would, would sign up from that from an outside linebacker. 14 sacks average, over 22 tackles for loss a year. Talking about almost 40 plays behind the line of scrimmage. Come on. Do the math. That's like three and a half plays per game that he's making a play behind the line of scrimmage in the NFL, let alone college. Give me a break, man.
Really? I, we're at the point now, like I said, over overthought, overanalyzed, paralysis by analysis to the nine. Again, Bills fans, quarterback, Geno Smith, eighth overall pick, period. There's one thing that's tried and true in this draft. He's pretty much the consensus overall guy. So what? He's not RG3. He's not Andrew Luck. Who gives a shit? Take him. He looked good to me in, in some games. And people want to advocate, well, Nassib beat him. So what? Barkley beat Nassib three times, I think. And beat the hell out of Syracuse. By that logic, let's draft Barkley. Oh, can't do that. He doesn't have a strong arm. Come on. Give me a break. Again. Take the quarterback. The best one on the board. Over and out. End of story. End of video. All right. Thanks, Bills fans. I really appreciate your time.